Welcome. This is a another episode of Not Part of Your Scene, the podcast version. Uh, if you are look, listening to this on YouTube, you can also find this uh, in whatever podcast app you use, whether that's iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM, Podcast Lunacy. I can't remember. Uh, also, you can find the pod, the audio podcast on YouTube and. Uh, I think we're on SoundCloud too. That's not part of your scene. Hey, this is going to be the, uh, basically the pool list episode, which we'll be doing every Tuesday or Wednesday. Just, uh, talk about what's coming out for the week. Just talk comics in general. Mostly, you know, it's going to be no spoilers pretty much because I'll just be talking about what's coming out. Although I might mention something about a plot point if, you know, we're in the middle of an arc or, or some mini series or something like that. So anyway, uh, let's get started. Uh, we'll just get right into it. Um, we, this is Wednesday, so I've already grabbed my new books. I'm probably going to see how it goes and, uh, be hit and miss, hit or miss on, uh, when or how that, uh, I pull this. For the most part, uh, I'm going to try to get this out so it's out by Wednesday morning. It could be out Wednesday night or, or, or Thursday morning. We'll see. And it depends whether I'm going to talk about what I buy or whether I'm just going to go through the pool list and, and just see what kind of uh, talking points there are. So, you know, I use comiclist.com. Sometimes I'll use um, League of Geeks, I think, has a pretty good list. Also, Previews World. Today we're going to use comiclist.com. I'm just going to go through it straight through. So if you want to go to comiclist.com, I am looking at the, the new releases for Wednesday, March 27th. And uh, let's go through the list. First uh, thing that comes, that uh, hits me, is uh, an Aftershock Comics, Animosity, Evolution, Volume 2, uh, Lex Machina, the trade paperback. I had just finished uh, Animal Animosity, uh, the first trade paperback, so not the Evolution uh, one. And I really, I really loved it. And I don't know if that, if it just gets weaker later, or if I should be worried about the expansion of it into this evolution comic also, but it looks like evolution's pretty deep in too. So at least 10, 12 issues if the um, trade paperback just came out. So I will eventually get to that. I will probably end up buying them in trade just because I got the first two. I think I do actually have uh, the first volume in a, in a trade. And uh, so number two is now coming out. So very excited about that. Beyonders is also coming out. I, I bought the first issue recently uh, off the shelf. Aftershock, I like to sort of touch and play, see what's going on, see what what they're going to do. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Aftershock, though, is starting to grab me less just on the, you know, just when I see stuff on the newsstand. And that's mostly because uh, I'm just really sick of that trade dress. It's just so boring and and, and standard, it's, you know, just always just makes every comic look the same, even if you have, you know, a new font or a completely new kind of, completely new kind of, uh, of story, you know, I mean, everything from animosity to lollipop kids kind of thing, you know, and, uh, but then every comic looks the same. So maybe that's good, uh, in the long run, as far as branding and whatnot, but in, you know, as a, as a comic book buyer that, doesn't necessarily put everything on his pool list, likes to sort of see and hold it, decide whether he's going to buy it. Um, it is, you know, I'm getting a little, little bored with looking at Aftershock comics, to be honest. Uh, what do we got next? So Albatross funny books, um, you know, more, mostly popular for releasing the goon, uh, over the last, you know, over its history, pretty much, uh, is releasing mega ghost number four, so this is one of those things I probably would have picked up if I would have caught on it on number one. And uh, it looks interesting to me, but I try to stay away <laughs> because, uh, you know, I'm trying to cut back not only because of how expensive comics have been, but, you know, I haven't just been caught up on a lot of reading yet. So I got to, you know, be careful with that. And uh, in general, the indie indie stuff didn't have a uh, an incredible uh, week this week. So let's move on. Uh, Antarctic Press, nothing really grabbed me there. Archie Comics, it's one of those things where I'm surprised that still exists. Someone must be buying them. Every now and then I see 
you know, I've seen these horror Archies and I think, oh man, that would be cool. Maybe I'll read those and I'll be like, I read too much stuff and I'm pulling too much stuff. I don't need that Archie mess uh, in there. Uh, Avatar Press. I really didn't see anything much here. Um, you know, Avatar sometimes can be a little bit weird. Sometimes you feel like you're buying porn stuff, but it is what it is. And let's see here. And then uh, Boom Studios. Now, Boom Studios can be hit or miss. It's often something cool going on there. Okay, over in Boom, uh, something that's something I've almost bought historically was Avant Garde's, um, just because it involved that basketball. It was also a just it's just going to be a twelve parter. So it was something I you know I had it in my hand, but I put back on the shelf because. Uh, I really do need to cut back. My stack of comic books is, is quite large right now. Also, uh, Boom is uh, Bone Parish number eight. And um, this is also something cool. I, I'm reading Colin Bunn. I'm reading Empty Man. And I'm reading something else of his. So it was like, do I really need to get into this? Uh, you know, another horror book by him. I enjoy him a lot. But, I mean, is it is it something I I need additionally? <laughs> And um, I've looking at some of these covers, and I wish maybe I would have read, uh, I would have grabbed this over Empty Man, perhaps. I can always read it in trade, so we'll see about that. Of course, Jim Henson's The Labyrinth, that always looks cool to me. I've been seeing that over the last, you know, year or so. And uh, they are, Labyrinth Coronation is on its last issue. And Mighty Mouth Morphin Power Rangers, number 37, is coming out. I know people are into that, but... I'm not. Nothing. Nothing's really grabbed me from there. Uh, what does sometimes grab me, if they would do it right, are the comics uh, based on WWE. I've never actually bought one, but if they got the right writer and the right artist, and it was, uh, you know, based more on the personality, which they normally do, than you know, wrestling itself, then I, I might be into it. Uh, let's skip over Boundless. That gets a little intense for a family show here, and. Um, let's go right to Dark Horse Comics. Uh, Bad Luck Chuck number one is coming out. Now, I thought this was going to be uh, one of the burger books, um, but I guess it's not. Uh, so uh, the solicit is Cursed at Birth, Charlene Chuck Manchester hires out her own bad luck, providing disaster where someone else can profit. She can get you that insurance payout fortune for a price, but bad luck doesn't always go as planned. And when Chuck gets stuck between a, dis a dissatisfied crime boss client, a cult leader, and a dogged insurance fraud investigator, things get explosive. So uh, to me, Dark Horse has been on fire lately. So bad luck Chuck is something I would probably, uh, I'll probably pick up if I see it. It didn't get on my, um, it didn't get on my pool list. Uh, it's sort of a silly name, uh, not something that would grab me necessarily, but uh, that solicit actually looks pretty cool. It's by Leela Gwen, uh, Matthew Dow Smith, and Kelly Fitzpatrick. Uh, in general, uh, Dark Horse, I don't think anything came out. Uh, new Black Hammer, Age of Doom came out. They're at number nine. I only read the first trade of Black Hammer, and while I liked it, I think I was like a little tired of the post-superhero thing, which I, I've mentioned in the past. So, Black Hammer might be something I might come back around to because I love Jeff Lemire so much, uh, you know, or I'm a, I'm a fan of his writing, but I got to catch up on on Royal City. I only got, you know, I'm only seven issues in and that finished, and then I think Harrow County, I think it was called Harrow County, which people seem to like more for some reason. Uh, Fight Club 3, number three is coming out. I, I Mixed feelings about that. I was a huge fan of the book, and in my younger years, I read a lot of Chuck Palahniuk. I think a lot of People my age may have done that. And I knew he was always anti... Chuck Palahniuk was pretty anti-sequels, uh, but I know he's part of these sequels. So I don't know how I feel about it. It feels a little selling, you know, a little bit like he might be selling out, but I don't really know if the story's good. I don't care if you really sold out. Hellboy and the BPRD 1956, 5 of 5. You know, Hellboy is one of those things that's been running a long time, a lot like Savage Dragon, where it's just hard to know where you should poke your foot in. 
I will uh, continue to report on it, though, because he's he's important. I'm excited for the movies. I love the old films. So uh, if you're into it, you know, 19, set in 1956, part five is coming out. That means the trade's coming out soon. That might be something I just could read on its own. Um, Umbrella Academy is still going strong. A Hotel of Oblivion number six is coming out. I don't really pick that up. In fact, geez, I don't think I've seen anything yet that I picked up or that I will for sure. I mean, good... Bad luck, Chuck. Maybe that's funny. Normally, I'm already I already have a big uh, a big list of things. Well, I guess it was a light week for AfterShock. So let's hop right into DC Comics, uh, Action Comics 1009. I I don't follow it. I don't even know what they're doing with Superman. I know people have mixed feelings on Bendis, but the big one is Detective Comics number 1000. I did pick up the Bruce Tim cover. I thought it was. The cooler of the easy covers to find. I'm not going to collect a whole bunch of them. I'm not really into that. So if if you're into that, that's fine. But I mean, I, they're going to be so overprinted. A lot of these are just going to end up in dollar bins anyway. So uh, I, I am excited to read it. I know Warren Ellis has a story. And a couple other guys I really uh, enjoy and like do too. Um, Flash 67 is coming out I, I yeah i picked up the flashes when it crossed over with batman that's probably what they were doing trying to like inject some excitement into flash but i i honestly don't think i'm gonna uh continue with it flashes some of flashes bad guys just uh drive me nuts but joshua williamson really is a good writer so it's one that's like oh i might go pick that up then you know i might start reading flash or, or go and get into an arc uh, but I just don't need any new stuff, and the new stuff I do need or want to read is uh, going to be mostly indie stuff. Here's in Crisis number seven. I'm sure this is just going to throw a lot of people uh, off the deep end. I haven't read it yet. I did uh, pick it up. the The B cover is uh, is um, a Kilowogs murdered Polaroid, so that's going to be fun to check out and argue with people over whether Tom Green is good or not. I've personally gone back and forth on Heroes Reborn, but I'll also say that my opinion of uh, Tom King now is that I have to look back at his whole work rather than just go issue to issue, month to month. You know, because even like this stuff he's doing in Batman right now, this nightmare arc, I don't love it. I feel like it's going on too long. But when I look back on it, was there a reason? Was it good? Was it like surreal the way I wanted it to be? You know, am I going to read this whole Batman run again? I, I don't know yet. So Heroes in Crisis has definitely been controversial, even like within me, let alone in the world of uh, comic fandom. Hexwives number six. I feel like I am the only one reading this. It actually got good, really good last issue. So uh, I'm happy to continue following it. Uh, my thought is that this is a, I don't even know if it's a mini series or not because I kept, uh, you know, I keep, it keeps thinking like it's going to have this ending, but who knows what'll happen. So this is Ben Blacker, Mirka Andolfo, Jenny Frisian, I think is, uh, does one of the, one of the covers. Um, but, uh, that solicit looks pretty cool. So who knows, who knows how long that'll go. So I recommend it. If you just need something random, witchy, it's like has it's like it has a cartoony feel. So it's definitely not a horror book, but uh, still violent and adult vertigo type book too. So if you feel like that kind of thing, just grab it and trade. You'll be good. Martian Manhunter number four, I've absolutely loved. This is uh, Steve or Steven Orlando on that book. So it is something I think is that uh, criminally underrated right now. People aren't into it. Riley Rosmo is uh, does the art on it. Uh, I think it's just been sufficiently weird and, and wacky, and I think the art fits it. So I, I highly recommend it. I've liked every issue, and I'm sure I'll like number four too. So we'll see where that takes me. Uh, what else? So Sandman Omnibus Volume 3 hardcover. I recently told my wife she should probably get me the Volume 1, like for anniversary or birthday or something like that. And then... Uh, few other things I'm not really into as far as DC. Other people might be. I know people are into Shazam currently because of the movie coming out. Silencer I actually do like. I'm just behind on it, so I, I didn't pick it up today. 
And man, it feels like I didn't pick very much up, but I must have picked a bunch of Marvel BS up because Heroes in Crisis about the only Heroes in Crisis and Detective Comics was the only thing I picked up in uh, in DC. Dynamite Entertainment. I do plan on getting Peter Cannon Thunderbolt, but I'm giving it, you know, the same loose rope I gave to Prodigy, which I, I quit buying. So Thunderbolt has sort of the same feeling. So, I mean, the thing that might keep me around Thunderbolt more, more is that I'm such a Kieran Gillen fan and uh, just love every, anything he writes. So he's this is his way to write a superhero book. So that's number three. There's a bunch of covers. I just grab whatever looks the coolest. Actually, I see a Christian Ward cover, but it's a, a ratio variant, which sucks. So um, I would like to get the Christian Ward cover. IDW uh, Publishing has a bunch of their their um, licensed stuff. Just from watching cartoonist Kayfabe, it's made me a little bit interested in G.I. Joe because one of the guys that I'll often guests there, um, Scrooge, I forget his name now, is doing uh, GoBots and did some G.I. Joe and Transformer. Oh, Tom Sh- Tom Scholey. Uh So G.I. Joe sort of interests me. I think he, there's a lot of potential there with those characters to do something cool. So they are releasing G.I. Joe Sierra Muerte number two. But... I just finished Mars Attacks, you know, as far as something wacky and licensed, I don't know that I'm going to put my foot back into something. I, I might have just done, you know, since I'm watching cartoonist Kayfabe do Tom Scholey's GoBots. It's already on number five, though. It feels like it came out of nowhere. One thing I am buying from IDW that is not licensed is uh, Punk's Not Dead, London Calling, number two. I lost number two of the first series, and I can't remember if I read it. So I've just completely frozen in reading that series. I'll probably just stop and and read it all, all at once. Um, but I really, really liked the book, and I think I may have read number three. I picked up number one of London Call, Punk's Not Dead, London Calling. Uh, you know, if you're an old punk rocker, you're a music fan, and you want that sort of weird you know, ghost supernatural stuff. I, I think it's worth it to pick up, to be honest. Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons, number one, the director's cut. I will not be buying that. I did buy the, because it was just going to be a four-issue series. I don't know what the director's cut could have in it that would make me buy it. And then the uh, children's Star Wars books. I've never actually read any of these. I'm going to start writing for Dork Side of the Force, and um, that may make me start buying these just so I have something to review and write about. I want to do a a big comic focus. So uh, we'll see if I do. There's part of me that just is like, oh, excited, just a more cartoony version. There's another part of me that thinks that's really silly. So, Uh, And then let's hit up Image Comics. Uh, Image always has a bunch of stuff I wish I was reading. So Black Science number 39, I've heard good things. Hardcore and Ice Cream Man, I don't read. Isola number 7 is coming out, I don't read. Man Eaters didn't really ever grab me. Realm, I'm reading in, in trade. So number 12 came out. That means that second trade paperback should be around. I did pick up Sharky the Bounty Hunter. Uh, it's a Mark Millar book. It's already supposed to be a Netflix show in a couple years. The first one was actually entertaining. It was wacky and weird enough. So I'll keep with that. Skyward number 11, I, I plan to read that in trade. I haven't even bought the first trade yet, but number 11 is out. I think that's a, just a really cool uh, premise. Um, if I uh, hop over to Spawn 295, I've been buying Spawns on cover buys. Um, Francesco Matina has been doing them. And while I, I do, I have dropped in respect for Matina, you know, Spawn is basically built for covers. I mean, that's what Todd McFarlane does, all his weird weird and wacky stuff. So I did, I I picked one up just because it looked cool. Impact Theory, Neon Future. I picked up, this is a Steve Aoki's comic uh, book. And uh, I think it's the very beginning. So this is one of six. So I decided to check it out. Steve Aoki has a sort of interesting thread. I'm not a EDM guy. I should say I'm not a big EDM guy. I don't want to be the guy that hates on it. But, uh, you know, I try listening to it. I, Sort of like reading about the old culture, the EDM, before it was called that, in the 80s and ni- in the 90s and early 2000s and stuff. And Steve Aoki was actually in a bunch of punk bands in the Seattle area. So he's a musician, and I'm curious about his uh, you know, mindset doing a, a book like Neon Future. And it's a number one, so I grabbed it. He's not writing it, though, which, you know, that would be cooler if he was writing it. 
Uh, I should probably tell you who's on it since I told you Steve Aoki isn't writing it. Uh, Jim Kruger, Neil Edwards, and Jeremy Rapak. So I don't, not super familiar with any of those guys. Uh, maybe I'm stupid. They're not grabbing my, my mind. So uh, let's move on. Lion Forge. I've been trying to buy Lion Forge books, but I don't see anything there. Marvel Comics. Now I bought a lot of this. So Age of X Men. Age of X-Men, The Extremist number 2. I have enjoyed Age of X-Men. I don't feel like anyone's talking about it, but then I'm an X-Men nut. Uh, I love Nate Gray since the days of a, uh, Age of Apocalypse. I had a friend that actually collected them at that time. I was collecting some other BS and uh, just enjoyed it. It stayed with me, and I've always planned on on following all those Age of Apocalypse characters and getting their full runs uh, the ones that spilled over into the regular world. So Blink, X-Man, Sugar Man, and Dark Beast are the basically the four. I um, can't remember if someone else said I think it's just those four. So X-Man and, and Blink are the ones that have the most uh, comics associated with them. Now this is uh, starting to get good. The, the, all the stories are mixing together a little bit, so it's hard to say that, oh, you could just read... I think you could just read The Marvelous X-Men. It looks like... X Men and the extra or Apocalypse and the Extracts is also spilling into them all. Um, so that's something that is going to be a focus, going to have to be a focus if you were to just dip your toe in Age of X Men. But it, it's really hard to say right now which the you know which is the best and and where it's going. It's just a really weird world. You know, it's that utopia dystopia thing, which if you consider where X Men or Nate Gray came from, you know, a, a pure dystopia that I guess it makes sense that he's just sort of misled, uh, but, you know, been misled mind-wise, um, or just, uh, he's just crazy. He's became super o overpowered, but I still love him, and he's just taken everyone to a new world that you're not allowed to have sex in. And as soon as people have sex, they're just like, I don't know. It's just a weird thing. It, I, I haven't taken it all in yet. I'm just reading it. So Amazing Spider-Man number 18 has come out. Um, I have not been reading Amazing Spider-Man. I haven't been reading a, a different one, though. Avengers No Road Home number 7. Some of them have looked cool, but it's not something I wanted to pick up. I actually didn't pick up Black Panther number 10. I've been trying to grab them just because the uh, that intergalactic Wakanda thing looked uh, pretty cool. But I haven't read any of them, so I have like... Issue five, it's like Immortal Hulk. I have issue five, issue seven, issue nine, you know, when a, a cover was cool or something. And I would like to, because I think that that, that sort of storyline is a really cool idea. Um, and I will. It's one of those things that I'll just pick up here or there, whenever. But I didn't pick up 10 today. I decided to save some money on it. Uh, Daredevil number three, I did pick up. I've only read number one. I tried to skip Daredevil. And I couldn't. I ended up just buying number one and two on a slow week or, you know, when I walked into a comic store on a weekend. Uh, to tell you the truth, I love Chip Zdarsky, but I don't, I'm just sick of this, you know, brooding daredevil, the Catholicism thing. Like, we need to open a new, a new page in the world of daredevil. Um, let's see, Cloak and Dagger, uh, Deadpool. So that Doctor Strange cover looked awesome with Galactus, but in my hand it looked a little faded and boring, so I didn't bother getting it. I, I just really would like to see that painting or, or the variant version of it, or, or the uh, virgin version of it. Um, I have no idea why I'm buying Hulk Vereens. I didn't hate the first issue. It's really sort of silly, but it's only three issues. One thing it did get me at was that it was four ninety nine, so that annoys me a little bit, but... You know, shrug, move on, uh, continue with my life. Uh, Invaders number three, also by Chip Zdarsky. I uh, listened to an interview with him on Off Panel, I think the podcast is. And it made me interested in Invaders, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, he, he made it sound like he, he's really writing is a Namor book. And I don't know that that's the case or that that's going to make me want to make me want to read it. Uh, but it's in the back of my head because I do like Chip Zdarsky a lot. Um, Savage Sword of Conan is being uh, reprinted. I thought I missed something there, so eyes got real big. And 
Uh, Star Wars Dr. A- Aphra came out. I read that in trade. It makes me get behind, and that annoys me a little bit. Um, you know, I've only read the first two trades because I think that's all in, that's all there is in hardcover. Um, but I just really like that character, the you know this Afra character in the in the comics that seems special to the comics. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Wouldn't mind seeing her in a cartoon or something later on. But um, I did really enjoy that that character and her sort of not that every story was going to be great, but the way she was built by Kieran Gillen. Also, she's built by Kieran Gillen, right? Star Wars Dark Visions number two. Uh, Loved the first one. I hope they continue with the um, third-person narration of something Darth Vader's doing. I also hope that it it's very it's creative, as far as it just not being a new planet, a new thing someone's seeing. So, uh, I think Dark Visions number two is really going to show me what that uh, what the series is supposed to be, essentially. Uh, Superior Spider-Man number four. I've actually really enjoyed it. I like. Uh, Otto Octavius' mindset as a um, as a Spider-Man. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. He's in San Francisco. Venom's in San Francisco. Why wasn't there a cool-ass crossover? Anyway, he's uh, they're touching in on the cosmic stuff in that last issue. I don't know if I'm in an arc or not. I, I don't really know. I just like his, like... I like his, his mindset, so... Um, and then on the on the uh, B cover is uh, Spider Man fighting Doc Ock because it's a Spider Man villains cover, and that just throws me off. You know, it doesn't make any sense. And uh, then there's X Force number five. I can't even remember if I picked that up. Uh, I've liked the book. I'll probably drop it just because it's not super important what they're doing. I like uh, Dylan Burnett's artwork, even though it's controversial, uh, but. We'll see after they leave this country that they're fighting, and I'll uh, I'll probably drop it. But still on my radar. I still want to know what happens to Young Cable. In fact, that's probably going to keep me around. So who the hell am I? What the hell? Who the hell am I talking? Like I'm talking like I'm not going to freaking buy it. I'm like there's no hope for me. I just buy comics. There's just no hope for me. And um, so after that, the only other thing that's come out is uh, you know after the big two. Scout Comics, I did buy Once Our Land Book 2, number one, a few weeks ago. Once Our Land Book 2, number two came out. I don't know if I realized that it was a book two. I haven't read it yet, so we'll see if uh, I can get into it. Star Bastard, number one, that's all. It's a number one from a a cool indie company. Uh, you know, has he has sort of a Lobo look. It is by Andrew Clemson and Jethro Morales, so I don't know if it's good or not, but... <laughs> it's number one. If I see it, I'll pick it up. I'm trying not to pick up number ones anymore. Then Wolfborn number two. I did pick up the first one. Uh, I did not read it yet. It's still on my just huge stack of comics. I just need to sit and read. If I see number two out there, I probably pick it up because it's like really it's an addiction to be honest. You know. So anyway, that is the pool list for uh, Wednesday, March 27th. I know I probably skipped a few that you uh, like. For example, this as I'm sh- scrolling up, uh, Forgotten Queen number two of four, a Valiant, uh, came out, and so did Friendo number five in Vault Comics. So uh, I definitely skipped some cool stuff there. Actually, just those two, because who cares about Xenoscope? And uh, and that's it. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please follow uh, Not Part of Your Scene on Instagram. It's at Not Part of Your Scene on Twitter. I'm not allowed to put that many letters, so it's. N-P-O-Y-S uh, underscore reviews. And you can follow me personally on Twitter at Chris Sarda. We also do a sports podcast, uh, Chaotic Sports. You can go to chaoticsports.com or, or find that in iTunes if you're a sports fan. And just ready to do a bunch more content. I am going to start uh, doing a previews show every month or every uh, Sunday night or Monday morning. By Monday morning it should be out where I will just talk about the previews that came out so we'll do a marvel previews show and it'll be like this where we just talk comics we flip through uh the book or we flip through the new releases or whatever and we just we just talk comics essentially so i'll do one for marvel i'll do one for dc i'll do one for the big indies in the thick preview book and then i'll do uh one for the small indies 
uh, if you just really want to, you know, reach out and, and, uh, and see what's going on there. Um, I'm always up. I do this really just for conversation. So really find me at Chris Sarda. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you listen to it, listen to it in the car, listen to it while you go to sleep, whatever it is. Uh, I want to thank you a lot for listening. You guys have a wonderful evening, morning, or day, or whatever time you are listening to this.